I'm back with another episode covering my retro adventures on the Nintendo Switch. This little portable has shaped up to be a pretty big part of my daily gaming, and I wanted to share some of my recent pickups with you and talk a little bit about the quality of some of these games. I have nearly a dozen games this time, so let's take a look at Retro Gaming on the Nintendo Switch, Part 2. First up is Castlevania Anniversary Collection. This little gem was done for Konami by M2 and features 8 entries from the Castlevania series. Included here are the first three NES games, Super Castlevania 4 from the Super Nintendo, Bloodlines from the Sega Genesis, two Game Boy entries, the Castlevania Adventure and Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge, as well as a never before released English version of Kid Dracula, a Japanese Famicom game that is loosely based in the Castlevania universe. M2 did a pretty damn solid job here on the emulation with the sound and visuals both being faithful to the original sources. Some of these represent the very best gaming available at the time of their release. Even the Game Boy games retain a surprising amount of playability. Of course, the 16-bit entries are my favorite, with both Super Castlevania 4 and Castlevania Bloodlines easily in my top favorites of that generation. Kid Dracula is a fun little romp through NES-era gameplay though it doesn't feel like a Castlevania game in the slightest. I do appreciate its inclusion, however, and I certainly would never look down on a former Japanese-only game being converted to English in 2019. The only sorely missing game here is Dracula X Rondo of Blood from the PC Engine. I know it's in a collection for the PS4, but it very much belongs in this era of gaming and needed availability on other platforms. I can't be too hard on Konami though. This package is overall solid and even includes a little digital history book with art and information about the series throughout the years. This is available on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Switch, and PC. One of the most classic shoot-em-ups ever is R-Type, and R-Type Dimensions includes the first two games in the series. This was a really good addition to the Switch, and something I have found myself playing on the go quite often. I really like the fact that you can play these two in their original 2D forms for an authentic retro feel, or play them in their shiny new polygonal presentations. You can choose unlimited continues to have the entire game open to you, as well as choose the stages you want to play as you open them up. I really like this package, and there is even a demo of it on Nintendo's eShop. Give it a go if you like a good shoot 'em up. Night Slashers is part of the Johnny Turbo's arcade series of games, which has a surprisingly robust variety of offerings you may want to look into. I want to go over just Night Slashers here though, mainly because it sat forever in limbo without any kind of home release until just recently. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up set in a world that is overrun by monsters and zombies. The three heroes set out to right the wrongs these evil bastards are up to, and you'll come across all sorts of sick assholes to kill. One thing that will catch your attention right away is the gore. Unlike many games during its era, this one is loaded with blood, guts, melting skin, exploding heads, and all sorts of other grotesque animations for your enjoyment. Another cool thing about this game is the fact that it's three-player co-op, retaining one of the arcade's coolest features. It's only eight bucks and looks great on the tiny screen of the Nintendo Switch. I also picked up Mega Man 11 for my Switch. 
I absolutely love this game, and it's my favorite in the series since the original NES games by a mile. The 2.5D visual presentation is gorgeous, and the gameplay is as solid as it ever was. You get the normal Mega Man staples like different weapons after defeating bosses, but you also get two new power-ups in the gear system. Mega Man can now slow time to better deal with fast enemies, as well as power up his attacks for increased damage. It adds great variety to already classic gameplay. There is also a casual difficulty that allows anyone to enjoy the game, something this series has desperately needed for years. It's on pretty much everything, but again, having it portable is just icing on the cake for this quality title. There have been a few recent releases in the Sega Ages line for the Switch, with Virtua Racing being an instant must-own. Never has this game looked or ran this great, and the gameplay is as solid as ever. It makes an excellent case for Sega bringing more of its Model 1, Model 2, and Model 3 arcade games out in the Sega Ages series. The benefits of modern hardware are quite profound on some of these early 3D efforts. Sega's next batch of announcements for the Sega Ages better have more additions like this, or I foresee one hell of a revolt coming from their fans. Full motion video games were once thought to be the future of the hobby, however brief. Night Trap was one of the games that spearheaded at this era and it's now available in a nicely updated package with extras and a new presentation. The video here is infinitely superior to the old Sega CD, 32X, and 3DO versions released in the 1990s, and there are a few really nice upgrades like each preview monitor being animated with what's going on. If you haven't played Night Trap before, you are part of a secret team of commandos that have discovered the existence of a family of vampires that are wiping out groups of teenagers at their lake house. You must use your surveillance devices to watch the house, trigger its traps against the bad guys, and save the teens from their bloodthirsty hosts. If you played this as a kid, you will probably love the new features and how it looks now. You can even change it to resemble the old look in the options, and after you beat it, you can even watch it as a movie. Full motion video games would of course die as quickly as they rose, but it's still nice to revisit this era of gaming with this many improvements. It's cheap too, and available on damn near everything. Believe it or not, I was a big fan of the Crash Bandicoot games. I always thought this is what Sega should have done with Sonic on the Saturn. Corridor-style 3D segments mixed with 2.5D side-scrolling stages. I really enjoyed its mindless fun, and Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy has the first three PS1 games. All of them have been improved significantly visually and run great. I might have not purchased this on a dedicated home console, but having it portable is a huge positive to this type of game. I can play a quick stage here and there without investing tons of time and effort no matter where I am or what I'm doing. It's a good package for those of you that enjoy these types of games. While I'm on the subject of retro games, I have also discovered a few games that are newer, but done in a retro style. Indie games have sort of taken over as the vessels of everything classic yet new, and I have a few I'd like to talk about. Raging Justice is a beat-em-up done in a classic style that is actually not bad at all. It's typical story time here, crime running wild and a few good guys willing to kick everyone's ass to change it. It's really good stuff. The visuals are really unique in their style and animation. It looks almost digitized with stop motion techniques. Honestly, it looks like something Sega of America would have done with Streets of Rage 4 had it made it for the Saturn. 
It's hard, too, and alone you are going to be in for one hell of a fight. Grab a friend and challenge it in two-player mode to get the most out of it. The controls take some time to get used to, with separate buttons for grabbing enemies, picking up things, as well as punches, kicks, and jumping. Once you find your groove, though, this can be a very entertaining game. It isn't going to knock the better games in the genre off their thrones, but this is a good cheap play for fans of kicking ass. <laughs> Remember Assault Suit Linos and Cybernator? Well, if you like those, then I highly recommend Gigantic Army. It's a hell of an homage to classic shoot 'em ups like that, and man, is it hard. With that difficulty comes excellent gameplay for you to learn and come to terms with so you can survive. It's visually beautiful and is so much like other 16-bit mech games that you just have to love the hell out of it. You have different weapons to choose, a shield to block attacks, and massive boss fights that are four screens long. It isn't just perfect as a portable game, I also recommend it on the big screen if you have a PC instead. Sometimes a developer captures not just the look and feel of an old game perfectly, but also its heart and soul. Gigantic Army here is one such game. Agalos is an amalgamation of a bunch of really great games. It's part Zelda 2, part Wonder Boy, and sprinkled with touches from Castlevania, Metroid, and a dozen other NES era games. What you end up with is one damn fine action adventure. Your dimension is being invaded by evil beings set on destroying life as you know it. You set out across caves, forests, and other dangerous areas trying to find a way to stop them. Visually, this pays respect to the 8-bit games on which it's based, while giving you the color and clarity to stay a great-looking modern experience. Just about everything here looks, sounds, and plays great. You will gain new abilities, items, and stats as you get deeper into the world, always ensuring you a reason to come back and keep playing. It's a sublime effort that fits really well on the Switch, and I can't recommend it enough. There are hidden gems out there that can surprise you with their quality, but what you have here is a bona fide must buy. The last game I want to talk about is Guns of Mercy. It's a throwback, single-screen arcade shooter that is really addictive if you like this style of gameplay hook. Aliens have taken over the surface of the Earth, and humans have been reduced to living in caves under the Earth's surface. You come out to do some ass-kicking with up to four players. You can equip multiple upgrades to help you in your quest, as well as collect money to buy more. The gameplay here is fast and hectic, and goes completely crazy in multiplayer. It's the kind of game that's really easy to play with your kids or your friends, and again excels in the portable format. Grab this one when it's on sale for a solid arcade experience. The Nintendo Switch is evolving to be a nearly must-own device in my opinion. Aside from the stuff Nintendo themselves are doing, the indie scene has exploded on the device, giving newfound life to games thanks to the system's portability. For me, between the excellent classic content, indie releases, and top-notch AAA games, this platform has become just as important as the PlayStation 4 for my gaming needs. I hope some of these games highlight its versatility, and give you a few ideas on what you might want to pick up for yourselves. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will 
Catch you next time.